everybody, and thank you for being here this evening, and for those who are watching it live stream, thank you for being with us. We are embarking on the journey of the Triduum. The Triduum is the three-day journey or experience uh, in Christ's life as his life is coming to an end and as his glorification is about to take place on Easter morning. So tonight, Maundy Thursday, Holy Thursday, whichever you prefer, we are going to have a foot washing and we are going to be stripping the altar after this service. So if you would like to participate in both of those or either of those, uh, please feel free to come forward at the appropriate time. The collection for tonight and tomorrow is designated for the Anglican Communion Province uh, in the Holy Lands. And this is a long-standing tradition in the Episcopal Church. So let us begin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy is us forever. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we attend to God's word. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. 
You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of the raw or boiled in the water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains in the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 116 responsively by verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. I shall pay the Lord for all the good things he's done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your enemy. Free me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my to the Lord in the presence of his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he, when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that it was his hour, and it had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon, Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved, love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. For the next few days, we will be following in the footsteps of Jesus. We will walk the same path that he walked, though we will never face the same trial that he faced. And we won't face that trial because of what he has done for us. Today is Maundy Thursday. Here we have in the reading, Jesus is at the meal, the last supper with his disciples. Now in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this particular meal is a Seder meal. It is the Passover meal. In the Gospel of John, this is the day of preparation. It is the day before Passover. Because by putting this meal on the day of preparation, John has it that at 3 o'clock, when Jesus says it is finished, 
That's at the same time that they will be slaughtering the Passover lambs at the temple. And what John is making the point is that this is the ultimate sacrificial lamb. This is the ultimate sacrifice. Now, at this particular meal, there's a whole lot going on. We have the institution of the Eucharist at this Last Supper. We have the foot washing that we will reenact or use as a remembrance tonight. And we also have the betrayal by Judas. And Judas is as much a part of this gathering as anybody, though Jesus knows what Judas is going to do. But as the ultimate act of love, Jesus welcomes him, and Jesus includes him in the foot washing. Now, at this meal, they are gathered, and they have just eaten. And Jesus gets up, and he does something remarkable. He takes off his outer garment, and he's literally there in nothing but a loincloth. And he takes a towel, and he wraps it around his waist, and he pours a bowl of water, and he goes to each of the disciples one at a time, and he washes their feet. Well, for us, this doesn't seem to be that remarkable because we don't live in that time and we don't know those rituals. First of all, a rabbi would never wash the feet of his disciples. It just isn't done. But Jesus does it. A Jew would never wash anyone's feet. In fact, washing people's feet was such a vile task that the Roman slaves didn't even have to do it. That only the lowest of the low slaves were foot washers, or as I read in one passage, or women. Women washed people's feet. Now imagine this, you're walking through dusty Jerusalem, you're wearing your sandals, There's everything imaginable on that dusty road. Nothing was paved. And so here, when you would come into a dinner as an act of hospitality, your host would have a slave there to wash your feet. And then when you sat at table, you sat at cushions on the floor, but your feet were pointed away from the table. And so here, Jesus has instituted the Eucharist, He is trying to bid farewell to his most beloved disciples. And he gets up and he starts doing this. Well, imagine seeing something like that. I can almost picture like, what the heck is he doing? Do you know what he's doing? Where did he get this from? I've never seen this. He's the rabbi. We should be washing his feet. But Jesus, stripped down with a towel, goes from disciple to disciple, washing their feet. Now, these were Jesus' intimates. He was with these men every day in and day out for three years. This was Jesus' inner circle. There were bonds that were formed. There was true love between them. But there were probably also moments of animosity or friction or disagreements. But here at this dinner, Jesus knows it is his last. And he has tried, he has tried desperately to prepare the disciples, but they just won't hear it or they can't hear it. Remember at the wedding feast in Cana when his mother asks him, to create more wine. They've run out of wine. And he says, woman, my hour has not yet come. But we hear tonight, he says, his hour has come. Jesus was sent to be with us to reveal God. And once that mission was completed, once the task was done, God was recalling him back to him. And that's what we are experiencing and will experience in these next few days. Jesus has revealed God. Jesus has done the work the Father has sent him to do. 
And now it's time for him to return to God. It is time for him to be glorified just as God is glorified. But before that glorification, Jesus takes himself so low in the complete opposite direction of glorification. In humility, he is down on his knees in front of his underlings, so to speak. And that is the mandatum that we are given tonight. We're not given the command, mandatum is Latin for commandment. We're not given the commandment to wash each other's feet. And people get that confused. What we are given the commandment to do is to humble ourselves before God in the name of love for one another. Jesus is washing the feet of his disciples as a foretaste of what is going to happen on Friday. Jesus is showing them the humility of this act, this act that is so reviled that even slaves aren't expected to do it. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to model for his disciples that this is the life you must continue, a life of humble service, service to each other and service to the other. And he's trying to point out to them that you think this is humbling. You think I have gone as low as a person can go. Wait for tomorrow when I am nailed to a cross. That is the ultimate act of humility. You can't get any lower than that. But Christ has done that so we don't have to go through that pain and go through that torture. That Christ humbled himself to death, even death on a cross, on behalf of us. And so on this night before he dies, on the hours before he goes into the garden and his disciples deny knowing him, when Judas turns him over, Jesus knows all of this is going to unfold. But what he's doing is he's giving his disciples, he's giving his loved ones, he's giving his inner circle the gift of humility, the gift of undertaking a ministry that is not self-serving, that it is an act of humble service on behalf of the other. And we talk about it, we say that's the case, but is that how we truly live? The mandatum that we were given to love one another is as simple, so simple, a child can understand it. And it is so difficult that no mature Christian is able to live it and carry it out consistently day in and day out. What Christ is asking us to do is to take ourselves out of the equation, to think of the other, to give to the other, to be there, to be fully present when another is in need. And you know, I've always struggled with this in terms of, well, I don't like everybody I interact with. I've interacted with just some nasty people and I really don't want to be their friend. I don't want to like them. And Jesus isn't asking us to like one another. We're not asked to be besties with everyone we encounter or everyone we meet. But what Jesus is asking for is if that individual is in need, is in want, then it is your responsibility. You are required as a Christian to be there, to lend a hand, to give of yourself so that the other's need may be assuaged. So it's not about friendship, it's not about liking. It goes far deeper than that superficial act. It means that you are fully present. It doesn't matter whether you like them, whether you know them, whether you care for them. All that Jesus is saying is, I am commanding you, I'm not asking, 
I am commanding you to humble yourself before each other, before people in need, to lead as a servant, to be a servant to all God's people, to all people in general. If there is a need, you must be there to meet it the best way you can. That it is about humbling ourselves, not only before God, but before one another. And it's hard work. It's not easy work. But it's the work that we have been called to do. It's the work that we have signed on for in our baptismal vows. It's the work that Jesus did, and it's the work that he asks us to follow in his footsteps in the same manner. We're not asked to walk the Via Dolorosa to our own crucifixion. We are simply asked to be there for one another, to love one another, to care for one another, and to do as Christ has asked us. No more, no less. Amen. In this service, we do the foot washing. Now, the foot washing is open to anyone. Our deacon, Deacon Art, is going to be the one to wash the feet. And it is, it is a humbling experience. It is a very intimate experience. I've experienced it when my bishop washed my feet right after my ordination. But if you would like to have your feet washed, if you would like to wash somebody else's feet, please feel free to come forward, feel free to participate. I've just preached on humility, I've just preached on openness. This is open and all are welcome to participate. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God comes not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our master. Come remembering his admonition that what will do, what will be done for us is also to be done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. at the feet. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, your son Jesus Christ girded himself with a towel and washed his disciples' feet. Grant us the will to be the servant of others as he was servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, yet lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us take a few moments to reflect on the week past and as we head into this triduum to make special note of the times that we weren't present to people who needed our help, at the times that we did not humble ourselves, at the times that we had forgotten what it truly is to be a Christian. And let us present those offenses and those transgressions to God, ask God to forgive us and to restore us to God's grace and to prepare us to receive the body and blood of his most beloved. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen him in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, you all. Please be seated. Tomorrow, our Good Friday service is at 12 noon, and we will be distributing communion from the reserve sacrament. But as I said, at the end of this service, we will have a Eucharist just as we always do. I will bless you, but there will be no dismissal because as you've read in your bulletin, that today, tomorrow, and Easter, it is one service, so there is no dismissal. We'll dismiss you from church on Easter morning. But we will strip the altar, which means we will take the candlesticks, all of this for the foot washing, the flags, the plants, everything that is up there is to come out. And the altar guild will instruct us and guide us, but everyone and anyone who would like to participate in the stripping of the altar is welcome and is invited to participate in it. At the end of the service, I'll do a blessing. Deacon Art and I will go out, we'll take our our outer vestments off, and we will come back in in our albs, and we will also assist in the stripping of the altar. And then when that is done, there's no music, there's no recession, 
please leave the church in silence. And when we walk out and turn out the lights, we'll come in tomorrow, but we will not come back in here until Saturday afternoon to get us ready for Easter morning. So, any questions? I hope we see you uh, tomorrow and also Easter morning and then the Easter egg hunt is at 11.30, so um, you can't participate, you're all too big, but bring any little people that you might know who would like to participate in such an activity. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. service continues with Eucharistic prayer D, which if you're using the prayer book is on page 372.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say or sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete this work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray in the goodness and mercy that your Holy Spirit may descend upon these, and upon us and upon these gifts, and sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Justin, our Archbishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sally, our bishop, Candine, our priest, Art and Colleen, our deacons, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who we have been asked to remember in our prayers. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Bartholomew and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God, for the people of God. The body of Christ.
The post-communion prayer is found on page 365, or it is in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Yeah, but you have to be healthy. 